Hello there, YouTube. This is Zootagener Steve, welcoming you to the fifth episode of our Let's Play here in Rear Park. Uh, for those of you just joining us, that stands for the recently extinct animal... Uh, the, the Recovery Center. Oh, I almost forgot myself. Recently extinct animal recovery center, where we're focusing on animals that have gone extinct, basically, within the historical time. And today we are going to be building up first a little guest area here, and then for an exhibit we're going to be doing the Pinta Island Tortoise. Uh, for those of you who don't know, Pinta Island Tortoises were actually a subspecies of Galapagos tortoises that uh, unfortunately uh, have left us within the past couple of decades actually. Uh, in fact, the last Pinta Island Tortoise known to exist, uh, of course, uh, like all tortoises, Pinta Island Tortoises are actually fairly long-lived. Uh, he was in captivity, and his name was Lonesome George, uh, for two reasons. First of all, obviously, he was the last documented member of his species, but also there were several attempts to breed Lonesome George with uh, other Galapagos tortoises that were of a different subspecies, but it never seemed to happen for poor old George, and so that is why he is no longer with us. But before we get to that, I am going to go ahead and fill in this little area here, with a uh, just a place for concessions for guests. So I'm going to be using those uh, drink station, dessert station, and snack station that we get with the Snow Leo Combi Pack here. And you can just see I'm kind of putting up some fences and some of those uh, some of those uh, posts around it to fill in gaps, just to make it sure it look like it's all one big building. And then I'm going to put in some lines here using these uh, metal railings, which I do love so much. Even though, I, as you will see here, I'm not very good at them. It takes me a few tries always to kind of figure out exactly how they should be lined up. And uh, eventually I do usually get it, though. That's good news. So, uh, basically, this is the pattern kind of one for three right there. So it looks like there's three entrances that are three separate lines that guests can get into and out of without having to bump into each other. That was the thought. And we'll go from here to trying to put in a seating area which actually causes me a little bit of a problem here. I hadn't planned on making this a refreshment area usually, uh, originally, and um, I didn't want to like block off the entrance to the uh, inside viewing area for our thylacines that we put in uh, two episodes ago. So you'll see I do come up with a solution, although it takes me a bit. You'll see I just kind of put these uh, recycling bins and trash cans down, and I let it sit for a moment while I have a think about it, which is always a good idea to not try to force it, get frustrated, and uh, skip out and plan eventually, just kind of let it work around in the background of my mind, uh, where I do my best thinking, you know. But we'll go ahead here, and I do set up an awning real quick, which uh, I think looks pretty good. Uh, I'm using these awnings more and more, I think, uh, I don't know why I'm using them more and more now that I think about it. It's something that I've always had available to me, or I've had available to me for a long, long time. I just uh, suddenly decided to start using them for no reason that I can recall. But there you saw I switched down to the uh, guest mode, or zookeeper mode is what it's actually called. And I take a peek, and I clearly saw that it was a little boring. So I'm going to go ahead and do the thing which I've been recommending for the past couple of episodes, and switch this building to a multi-level structure because I don't know why, I just think aesthetically, yep, that looks so much better to me. So, that's, you know, my one advice in life. Whenever you can build a multi-level structure, go ahead and just do that. If I had to give a second uh, piece of advice in life, it would be, uh, before you start putting down letters, kind of figure out where the center of that multi-story building is. Because uh, otherwise, you're going to have to redo all of your letters like I currently am right now. And there you see. Um, so I'm just going to put this concession sign up, uh, putting it exactly in the center the very first time, as I always planned. That's how we're choosing to remember it. Pretty sure this is how you spell concession, C-O-N-C, yeah, yeah, okay, it still looks good. Alright, and now we'll move on to the, uh, 
favorite of everyone here, uh, putting it in bathrooms. It's something that I've become more and more zealous about, as you've probably noticed. Uh, as you probably hate to have noticed. Because, uh, not always the most exciting thing, but um, it does just add that extra level of realism I wanted to go with, and uh, that I wanted to you get. It does add that extra level of realism that I wish to go with. Yeah, that's, that's totally how I meant to say that the first time, is how we remember that one as well. Uh, particularly next to a concession stand here. Obviously, if you're going to put in some food in your park, you're probably going to have bathrooms nearby. Uh, but I went with sort of a smaller, uh, not so fancy one that I usually like the ones I did at the front uh, that I've been usually doing. Then we'll just drop in some doors here and sort of try to fill in the edges with... Oop, there we go, there's the restroom signs. But um, I'm never really confident on where to put those. So I'm just going to go ahead and put in the seedlings first. They're kind of like uh, a two and a half in the Zoo Tycoon height chart. Um, they're a little too high for... I guess they do rest about right there at the bottom of three. So I guess they are technically at three height. And, uh... Pro tip. Uh, try not to build annoying in the way roofs where you're uh, going to eventually need to put your cursor. They're annoying and in the way. And then we'll just go ahead and fill in the edges here. This is something I've become more and more at. I mentioned this back in the MOA, but I'm trying to use these placeable posts more and more to kind of fill in the edge and make everything seem like it lines up right. Uh, that way I can use these smaller doors here, which I think look a little bit more correctly. Look a little bit more correctly. Boy, my English teachers would shoot me for this episode. Uh, they appear to look a little more like the correct amount of size for the type of doors you would use for the restroom rooms. Go ahead and diagram that sentence, I assure you it's perfect. Alrighty, and we'll just throw a roof on these guys right here. And once we've got this finished off like that, now we can go move on to the main attraction, and that's our Pita Island tortoises. We're going to go ahead and put in their structures. Right after we put in a little drinking fountain for our guests there. Which is, after all, a restroom. You would find drinking fountains near a restroom. And I'm going to go ahead and use this little area here as sort of the eating area. So what I'm going to do is tweak the sort of general outline I was thinking of using for our tortoises exhibit. Uh, make it a little bit more accommodating for our guests, which will be easy here now. Like so. Right. And so the idea here is we're just going to be uh, it's going to be a smaller exhibit, just trying to fit it into that area that you might remember from the Upland Moa tutorial, uh, Upland Moa Let's Play from last episode, where I was uh, kind of toying around with building in a little exhibit there, uh, maybe even putting it in a restaurant there. But uh, that's what brought up the idea for the concession stands. I decided, nope, I'm going to go with more simple concession stands, and that would allow me to put in this smaller exhibit. And I think these tortoises are going to fit very, very well into this uh, sort of limited space we have without looking at look like we cram them in. Uh, I'm trying to. Uh, one of the things I'm acutely aware I'm trying to do more of in the zoo is uh, try to avoid putting exhibits too close to each other or sort of forcing them to fit into a space. Because uh, I find when you do that, you end up with pathways that uh, look or feel a little claustrophobic -y to me. Nah, they just don't feel right. Okay, so we're going to put in a white building here. It's going to be our zookeeper's area. Put the cement, or concrete path down for that real quick. And then the rest of this I'm going to turn into tortoise world. Now let's get rid of that here. I'm going to make the back area a uh, watery place for the tortoises, so when the tortoises need some private time to kind of flop around in the water. And here we're going to switch from Galapagos giant tortoises to Pita Island tortoises. Mostly because I like to say Pita. Go ahead and put that in there so they'll have like a little pond they can go back behind when they want to get cool and get away from some people. Also 
gonna make this little square here stick out. So it's like, uh, that's where the exit for our zookeeper is gonna be. Go ahead and change this all into the semi-desert biome. Because these tortoises do live in the scrambling. You know what? Yeah, this is, uh, I go ahead and tweak this here. Just to make it look a little less awkward near that dining area. If I hadn't put diners there, I probably wouldn't have changed that at all. But, uh, as it stands, I think that's pretty good. Pretty, pretty good. And we'll get rid of these fences. I was just kind of using those for guidelines for my water area. And put in... Whoa, that structure is way too big. We'll go ahead and put in a little home for them. And we're going to put this heat lamp like in between this area where I'm going to have viewing places. So it's not obstructing anyone's view. It looks a little artificial, so I try not to make it stand out too much. And these walls right here, I'm using to create a little, like, fake cave habitat shade structure for our tortoises. And this, you'll see throughout the video, is something that I had to do a lot of corrections on to get it to look the way I wanted it. Um, that's obviously way too close to the ground. None of our tortoises could fit in if it was at that height. So I tried to get it a level 3, but then I ended up saying that the level 3 looked a little high. So what you'll see I do here is I attempt to make a sloping uh, structure for it. So it's obviously not like a loop down, we'll get to the front. And I think that this is a good idea. It doesn't quite turn out the way I wanted it to, so I will be tweaking it again later on. Spoil alert. But I think that's following the general idea of what I wanted. So, play with it a little bit. And then just kind of disguise it by putting these rocks around the side. Make it look a little more artificial. Uh, one of the disadvantages of the sloping roof you saw right there is I couldn't put any rocks on top of it. So that uh, that's one of the reasons I will end up abandoning this exact uh, look here for... Uh, eventually I end you know, up with another flat roof, but we'll get to see that in the future. Something to look forward to with the big switching back to the flat roof uh, event. It's going to be breathtaking, mind-blowing. Uh, your life will really not be the same once that occurs. Then we'll go ahead and fill in some little bushes here in the areas that I don't want the guests to walk to. And uh, I think I grabbed a maple instead of the birch. Yeah, I grabbed a maple. Put it there. I didn't like any of the, like, big bushes that came with these tortoises. I do end up using this, uh, brush grass, which looks okay in the scrub biome. I'm not a huge fan of it, but I do think it works here. I wouldn't, like, uh, use it as the main grass to decorate my zoo with or anything, but, uh, in the scrub landed biome, it looks just fine. Fortunately, I do have these little trees, and I think, uh, both the little trees here and the Pinta Island tortoise come from the Interesting Islands Galapagos pack that uh, you can get at the Zoo Tycoon 2 Roundtree forums. Just go to their download section and you can get it also. Yeah. And looking about. Looking about. Looking about. For some reason I did not, uh, I'm really, really against having the back of the cave have a hole in it. Um, I'm okay with this one from the side, but I don't want to have a hole in it. Uh, now, these are fences that our guests could reach over, so I did feel the need to put in the please don't feed the animal signs. And because those uh, posts that the don't feed the animal signs are a little spincy, I went ahead and just used the cat's log level one to kind of make them look a little fuller. And we'll put in some beautiful mahogany in viewing areas. And line the back here with our juniper bushes, which are also present in our zoos just to kind of disguise the background a bit. And before I forget, we'll go ahead and put in the doors that our zookeepers are going to need. And I actually did forget to put in one door, uh, but it's quickly corrected. I need the door that will actually allow our zookeepers to get into the exhibit here, you'll notice. Uh, so let's get that drinking fountain out of the way of that door. And then we'll put in a staff-only sign here. I think that's what I do, at least. Yep, staff only sign. See, I remember what I did. 
I mean, this was like minutes ago. How do you expect me to remember doing this? And here, I think I actually really like this. I kind of put this little guiding rail at the zookeeper's entrance, just like uh, something to stop them from accidentally tripping and falling into the water or something weird like that. I thought it was a nice little touch. Uh, if you hate it, please leave a comment below, otherwise I might start doing that more often in the future. Because I love me some metal railings, if you haven't been able to figure that out yet. Uh, okay, so the view from our dining area seems to be pretty good. I do want to put in a couple cans there, so they don't have to walk if they don't have to, or they don't want to. And then I'm going to use our grass with daisies in it to fill out the bottom area here, as you know, I guess we're going to get a pretty good look at that. And if there's no underbush, I think it feels kind of empty. So that's the reason why I wanted to go ahead and throw that down there. It's not that I'm just obsessed with that grass, of course. And now we come up with a big question of what we do with this area here. Uh, I decided to just kind of black off the main area with these juniper bushes, but I still had a question of, that's a lot of dirt there. What am I going to do with it? And so, my answer was, of course, white flower, orange flower. You thought we were going to go an episode without white flower, orange flower, didn't you? You were wrong. The white flower, orange flower cannot be stopped. It is the work. Resistance is future. The fuel. Boy, I really did not speak this episode. Okay, and we'll fill in here. And expanded the junior promotions. I just didn't want anything to see through. And then I also extended the fence here, uh, just because I didn't want people trying to look back through the tortoises. That wasn't going to be a very good view anyway. So I figured uh, extending that out to make it obvious that we weren't supposed to be looking that way was a pretty good idea. And then I went ahead and tweaked that a little bit, uh, just again to make it more distinct. And then I, where the two fences change, I put this English oak. You see, I had to adjust it a little bit right in front of that. So the idea was, from either view, we wouldn't be able to see the fence change, because the tree would be in the way, more or less. And I think that looks pretty good. I'm just doing some checks here. Uh, I think at this point, it comes the... Okay, I know, I know I kind of spoiled it, but this is the point where we change the roof. It's going to be a level 3 flat roof. Get ready for it. Here it comes. Here it comes. I can't even... Well, I was smart enough when I had the roof off to take that time to put in the uh, hay from CRG. But there it is. As promised. It's a thing of beauty, really. It's, uh, it's, well, I would describe it, but words fail me. They should have said a poet, really. That's, that would be the only appropriate thing. Uh, but you can see the advantage of the flat roof is that you can put plants and rocks on it. So I could kind of better disguise their little cave here. Not that it's, uh, obviously, you would still say it's artificial, but it's not bad artificiality, I guess is the way I would put that. So we'll go ahead and lengthen those. And at this point, I felt like there was not enough uh, water area for our tortoises, so I'm kind of playing around here in ways I don't usually. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and change it so that our exhibit goes right up against the outside zoo wall. Uh, this is actually going to ne ne necessitate a change of the background the wall we're using here to match the outside zoo wall. So I just did that like that. And I'm okay with the juniper kind of creeping through. I don't think that's, uh, I don't think that's bad. I mean, I've got the railing there, so it's not like I've got the place looking like it's really, really, super, really fake, or uh, really, 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 um, super, really disguised to look like a natural environment. Uh, there's some obvious artificiality in there already, so I don't think that's, uh, more, or, uh, less, uh, naturalistic looking wall is really gonna hurt as much. But we'll go ahead and put in a few small touches here for our zookeepers, make it look like they actually have to do work. They're going to need, uh, just to make it a little more interesting here, I'm going to go ahead and make a change to lower that white wall to a 2, and then we're going to put in some glass railing here. And this again, uh, I know I've said several times if you can make multi-level structures do it, I didn't think a multi-level structure would really work here, so I figured the next best thing was to at least include some glass 
in there and then give it that dark background, kind of, or a dark border. Because I figured that was probably the best thing to do. And at this point, I discovered this little cactus tree. If I wish I had known about it earlier, I probably would have done some different designs. But I'm going to stick one or two in here, just because I thought they were really, really cool looking, and I could get away with it. So I think that's also what leads a lot of those pack I mentioned earlier at uh, the round tree you can get. Getting towards the end here. Uh, anything else we need to do? Uh, I guess we need to actually put the tortoises in the exhibit. Probably a good idea. And this time we'll put in two ladies so that the Lonesome George need be lonesome no more. Well, come here for our final walkthrough. Oh, Phylos and Three just gave birth. Yay! We got a balloon with K. So not only have we got the original Phylos scenes that we brought back, but we've got all new generations. How are you doing? Is the baby in here? Uh, uh, a lot of you are in here, but uh, no baby. So we'll just move on then. This gives us a good look at our concession stand, which I think came out pretty well. I'm fairly pleased with that. Looks pretty much like one good structure. Oh, there's Santa Claus who must be around Christmas. We'll go ahead and check out this bathroom real quick. Got a little sink there. Just one stall, uh, so it's like a one person at a time bathroom, unlike the bigger ones we put at the front of the zoo. But we'll go ahead and come out of here and go around and let's actually take a look at our Pinta Island tortoises. Just looking around, so you can see them obviously fairly quickly, from, uh, clearly from your picnic benches. How you doing there, guy? And I think this is actually a really good mob. They look really good, and they've got those really like intern legs that I associate with tortoises. Oh, and you can see some of our toy guy have gone to the pond in the back there, which makes me glad I expanded it. Oop, we are out of film. We have to get rid of some pictures here before he takes them to the future. But they're back there. They're hanging out, hanging out with the family, having themselves a good time. Uh, unfortunately, none are in the cave, but we'll take a look and see. I think it came out really well here. I'm very pleased with that. And I did put in, like, food and carrots. Uh, and this is now what the pathway towards our MOA look like. You can see our MOA there. Hi, Mr. MOA. And we've got those flowers going into this area that we designed to kind of look like the uh, area outside of Dodos. Came out really well. And looking back, uh, it does feel like it's a separate exhibit. I don't feel claustrophobic walking down this path. So that's very, very good. Uh, let's go ahead now and take a look at our tortoises as a zoo people would. And we go through the mystery door here right around the corner and now we can go into zookeeper area do 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 looking around oh i actually need to push that shelf up against the wall whoopsie oh well i'll do that off uh camera see if you guys some mad time and we can see well our ladies have gotten out of the water let's give them a nice scrub scrub and you are just hanging around by the food you must be a hungry guy huh i don't blame you but here we go, yeah, it's a nice, simple exhibit, and I'm actually really pleased how this turned out. Uh, like I said, I had a limited kind of area to work with because uh, we had the edge of our zoo and we'd already put in the exhibits on the other side and we're kind of fencing it in. But I think the tortoises are the right size animal for this right size exhibit, and I'm really glad that the pathways don't give me that claustrophobic feeling that uh, sometimes I get when I have things packed too close to the side there. But that does it for this episode. I do hope you enjoyed it as much as I enjoyed making it. Uh, if you did like it, be sure to like, comment, and subscribe below. I want to thank you so much for watching this for today. As you can see, we've pretty much filled up the nearly a fourth of the re zoo, but that means we've got lots of space left for lots of new creatures, so be sure to tune in next time. Thank you again for sharing your time with me today, and I hope you have a great rest of your day.